Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Proja and today we're going to be taking a look at the Razer Death Adder Chroma Edition. So in this video I'll be unboxing it, taking a look at its features and also giving my over impressions of it. As well as how it's been holding up over the past few months. This is basically the same as the 2013 edition except from having a DPI boost, which in this case you don't really need, and ergonomics improvement in RGB lighting. This along with few of its competitors are considered the best FPS mice. So just how well does it hold up? Stay tuned to find out. Now getting into the unboxing, I'll notice that Razer is like the apple of the gaming industry, at least in marketing. So on the front of the box, which most of you will only see for about 10 seconds, as well as all the features stamped on the side, parts that make up the mouse on the back, and some more in-depth features on the side. Opening the box, you get what we're all used to seeing, being some cards telling you about Razer's loyalty reward scheme, as well as the usual congratulations, there's no turning back card. Besides this, you also get a quick start guide for the Death Adder, and two chroma stickers with clear backgrounds. So I've broken this thing up, the same as the Razer Naga review, being ergonomics, build quality, design, features, and the software. So starting with ergonomics and comfort, this mouse is pretty comfortable. It sits on the hand nicely, and for an ergonomic mouse, this is to be expected. It is quite a big mouse though compared to the Naga. So whilst the Naga is aimed at small to medium sized hands, this is somewhat medium to large. So it's much longer and has a sort of arc shape which your palm rests on. The plastic isn't rough on your skin, and the anti-slip rubber pads on the side are well placed as well. And whilst it doesn't have a fourth finger rest like the Naga, it feels just as comfortable without one. That said, something a little softer would have been nice. Now in terms of build quality, this mouse is plastic and whilst it is a hard plastic, it does feel a little less premium due to it being so lightweight as well. It does have a nice braided cable and a gold plated USB, and the buttons do give that clicky sound and are extremely tactile. So far, I haven't had any problem with the 4G sensor, which by the way is an optical sensor. So yeah, in terms of this, there's not much to say about the mouse since the frame of the mouse is plastic, but the buttons still retain that tactile click, which is what Razer calls the hyper-response buttons, though they function the same as any other one. I will say though that on few occasions, I have actually got the double click issue. I don't know what that's about, but I've heard some people have the same problem. The design on this mouse is really good as well. The Death Adder has two extra buttons on the side, which are really easy to press, and they also make a satisfying click noise, and as advertised, they are responsive. That and they're really well placed on the sides makes them easy to use really quickly. Whilst there aren't anywhere near as many as on the Naga, in some cases, depending on the user, and for me at least, less can be more. It would have been nice to have dedicated programmable DPI buttons though. And whilst the mouse does not only just look awesome, especially with the RGB lighting, it also has that really sleek ergonomic fit. Lighting on this mouse is pretty epic, like there is so much customization there, and I find that the colours that stand out the most are blue, green, yellow and red. So if that fits in with the lighting on your system, there you go, more on that. Now in regards to features and software, Razer have put in an awesome 4G sensor which is capable of 10,000 DPI. Being realistic though, the maximum anybody would use is 2,000. I mean, I personally use 1,700, so there goes that. So yeah, that high of a DPI is pretty much just a gimmick, but it does allow for accurate movement in general, even at a low DPI. That paired with a 1000 hz polling rate makes this an absolute killer in FPS games. Now the polling rate basically determines how often the mouse sends information to the computer. Normally the more the better and the Razer software allows you to configure the different profiles, macro setting and lighting. For example, I can make a different profile for another game and select that when I start. Macros also allow me to record a combination of button presses or mouse actions and have that run just with one press of a button. Settings is where I can adjust my DPI, mouse surface, polling rate, etc. And lastly, you have lighting where you can quite obviously change the effect. I have mine set to spectrum cycling, but it would have been nice to see the proper rainbow slash spectrum effect like on their keyboards. I actually really love their software though and think that's super easy to use. The one downside to Synapse though is that you have to create an account. This does make it really easy if you're transferring it over to another system since you can take your profiles with you, though I still think it should be optional. In general, the mouse feels great and made aiming and tracking a lot easier, most likely due to its awesome sensor. This is a mouse mostly targeted at FPS gamers since you don't really need more than two buttons. However, if you're looking at MMO games, do look at one similar to the Naga because the buttons really do help out there. Okay, so in summary, for the pros, you have the extremely accurate 4G sensor. You also have RGB lighting and the large tactile side buttons are pretty cool. Not to mention it's got a comfortable ergonomic shape and the Razer software is really freaking sweet. Now for the cons, the scroll wheel isn't a tilt one and there aren't designated DPI buttons. That and the build quality, while it is strong, is made entirely of plastic, which does distract from the premium product. Now in general, I highly recommend this mouse, especially if you can find it at select retailers for somewhat of a cheap price. As for being the best FPS mouse, I do genuinely think it's up there, but it's all down to user preference. Before I got the Death Adder, I did have the Naga and replaced it for this, not because the Naga broke or anything, but because I found out I wasn't utilising the tons of buttons. That and the fourth finger rest while comfortable made me over-aim because it slid too much on the mouse mat. 
Now, if you're an FPS or even an RPG game, I highly recommend you check out this mouse. It does have some flaws, but they're not deal breaking. Now, anyway, guys, this has been Proto, and if you like this video, do give it a thumbs up and tell me what mouse you use. Anyway, thanks for watching. This has been Proto. Adios.